I'm joined now by Peter Kyle, who's Shadow Science, Innovation and Technology Secretary. Very good morning to you. Thanks for talking to us this morning. I want to start off with uh, talking about the betting allegations. Um, four people linked to the Prime Minister are being looked into over allegations that bets have been placed on the date of the general election. Uh, Rishi Sunak said last night he was incredibly angry about it. Uh, he said he's promised to boot out anyone found to have broken any gambling law. So are you satisfied that this is being handled correctly? Uh, no, no, I'm not. Uh, Keir Starmer said very clearly yesterday that had this been any anything involved in a Labour candidate, then their feet wouldn't have touched the ground. They'll be out. Uh, also compare this to the fact that, you know, there is unfortunately a police officer that's been uh, mired in this as well. That police officer is now suspended from the police force pending investigation. But Rishi Sunak has not suspended any, anybody associated with the Conservative Party. So it's very clearly one rule for them and another rule for everybody else. Rishi Sunak should get a grip of this problem. Well, yes, he makes the point that the allegations are being properly investigated by the relevant law enforcement authorities and said the integrity of that process should be respected. We are in the general election campaign. In two weeks' time, the country will go to the to the to, to the voting booths, and they will cast their vote. And Rishi Sunak is quite clear, uh, quite comfortable, campaigning alongside MPs, allowing members of staff to be putting to the country uh, a prospect uh, a prospectus for the future, which is being a message being carried by people who are under investigation for using insider information. It appears uh, to make decisions to enrich themselves. It is themselves first and country second. With the Labour Party under Keir Starmer's Change Labour Party, it will always be country first, public service first and party second. Do you think this issue risks damaging trust in all politicians? I think the Conservative Party has done one thing successful in 14 years, and that's breed cynicism. Uh, they've broken domestic law, they've broken international law, right the way to, through to the last minute. They seem to be breaking rules, not, not to do uh, things which are in the public interest, but it is about self-interest. Right the way through this, this 14 years, we have seen self-interest trump public service. What you've seen with Keir Starmer is a desperate attempt, but even right through the debate on the Question Time special yesterday, to emphasise how important public service is to him, how public service is important to his style of leadership and how he intends to be as a prime minister should we win the election in two weeks' time. Um I want to talk about social care if I can. We're focusing on uh, that issue on our programme today. And the government has promised a cap on the amount that people should spend on their care. Your manifesto doesn't commit to that cap. So can you confirm that Labour will bring it in as planned in October next year? We will be focusing on social care for the tackling the root causes first. The root challenge with social care is the workforce because it is highly underpaid. Uh, we are, it is dependent on migrant labour. We will have a sectoral plan based on our new deal for working people, which will make sure that the, sa the salaries and the wages for those people working in the care sector uh, are of a standard that can attract people into the, in, who will work as a career into it, who will aspire to work in the sector, and we'll have the skills produced domestically for it. We will also integrate health and social care so that people can have wraparound care. They will have one set of care right the way through into older age. When it comes to things like the caps and uh, and the financing, we will set that out after the election, but we will also always, always do so in a way which is responsible, puts public finances first and sticks within our, our fiscal rules. So just to be clear, you can't confirm whether or not that cap will go ahead in October next year, as is currently the plan? Uh, yes, we will stick to the cap uh, in the next year. But after that, we will set out how we will invest into it into the future based on sound finances. Uh, Sir Andrew Dilnott, who's the architect of that cap, he's behind a lot of the reforms that are being uh, proposed and talked about, says that he thinks that politicians are, are reluctant to even broach the issue of, of social care because they're worried that that will just prompt the question about tax rises to pay for it. I mean, is he right? Wes Streeting essentially seemed to admit as much when he said he wanted a more ambitious policy, but it had to be affordable. What you've seen with the Labour Party, even in opposition, is extending the offer to work cross-party. That was rejected all the way through the last parliament by the Conservative Party. We've tried to find ways we can have a settlement for social care that, in, that takes it almost, almost out of the 
political fray, but we're now in a general election period. We are facing tough challenges because everybody knows that if the Labour Party wins in two weeks' time, we are going to have to fix some very deep-seated problems caused by decisions made after 14 years of instability and chaos caused by the Tory party and the way they've managed it, our public services and our economy. We will have to make sure we fix those fundamentals in order to get to the really knotty, challenging issues, which, uh, which are uh, some of the long-term solutions to challenges like uh, social care will involve. We will get there because we are offering a decade of national renewal. We're being honest about the scale of the challenge we face and the length of time it will take to fix some of these issues. We will take those crucial six steps forward, but we will get to fixing the long-term challenges such as social care. Um a quick question on uh, research and development. I know that you want to be talking about that today. What kind of announcement is Labour making on that? Well, today we're making the announcement that we're going to move from one to three year funding, which we have at the moment with the Conservative Party, to where, it, where, where the needs align to our national uh, priorities set out in our industrial strategy. We'll move it to 10 year funding. If you look at sectors such as the aerospace sector with the, Air, the Aerospace Technology Institute, where they have 10 year funding, programs, you, for every one pound of public money spent, you get seven pounds. So we're looking at areas such as, uh, for example, the Advanced Manufacturing uh, Research Centre um, in Sheffield. That's a good example of where one to three year funding is really good because you get two pounds put in of private money for all the money, for, all of the, for every pound of public money. But why don't we show more ambition? We think that uh, places like this and other lots of other centres have the potential to really, really in, uh, attract investment from other areas, to really make sure that we can explore all the potential we have for research, okay. development, spin-outs, creating jobs and wealth uh, into the future. So we think that moving to 10-year funding can attract okay. the private investment for lots of places and research... We are out of time. Sorry to cut you off mid-flow, Peter Carr, but we're about to, to come to the end of the show uh, for the moment. Uh, thanks very much indeed.